When Zarathustra was 30 years old, he left his home and the lake of his home and went into the mountains. There he enjoyed his spirit and solitude and, for 10 years, did not weary of it. But at last uh, his heart uh, changed and, rising uh, one morning uh, with the dawn, he stood before the sun and spoke to it thus. You great star, what would your happiness be if you had not those for whom you sign? That's how the great uh, Friedrich Nietzsche introduces us to what he called his greatest gift to humanity. Thus spoke Zarathustra, a book for all and none. Nietzsche's writing style is unique. He wants to make it clear from the very first uh, sentences that his style is poetic, deeply philosophical, adroitly rebellious, borderline ecstatic, and quite often polemic. You need to know that uh, once uh, you decide uh, to read Nietzsche, you will have to let go of your preconceived notions about proper writing and embark on a meaningful journey that will attempt uh, to revamp the totality of your intellectual makeup. I am personally in love uh, with Nietzsche. He seduces me, fascinates me, invigorates me, shakes up my whole world. He's really not your average uh, philosopher. As professors uh, Kathleen Higgins and uh, Robert Solomon write in the 2005 uh, translation of the book, philosophers uh, tend uh, to be tediously literal, but Nietzsche was a flamboyant uh, rhetorician who rarely shied away from even the most outrageous overstatements and accusations. As a consequence, uh, he seems to invite all sorts of uh, wild interpretations that go far beyond what uh, he could have literally intended. Nevertheless, it is uh, evident that he was willing to be misunderstood if that was the price of attracting our attention. And he really did a great job of attracting our attention. Thus spoke Zarathustra is a book for all and none, as he says, adding to the symbolic and oftentimes ambiguous nature of his uh, statements. Zarathustra is a prophet, and as every prophet, uh, he addresses everyone, risking uh, to be understood by no one. Through this uh, controversial figure, Nietzsche endeavors to immerse us uh, in the ideas that constitute uh, the bedrock of his belief system. Historically, Zarathustra is known as Zoroaster. As it is stated in the introduction of the book, he was a Persian who founded uh, his own religion. Zoroastrianism in turn had a profound influence on both Judaism and uh, Christianity. Central to the teachings of the historical Zarathustra was the idea that the world is a stage on which uh, cosmic uh, moral forces, the power of good and the powers uh, of evil, fight it out for dominance over humanity. This conflict uh, between good and evil uh, is central to both Judaism and Christianity, and uh, given Nietzsche's rejection of this uh, dichotomy, it is highly significant as well as ironic that uh, Nietzsche chose the supposed originator of that distinction as his central character and ostensibly as his uh, spokesman. The book has uh, four parts. Each part uh, attempts to address a different philosophical theme. Zarathustra wanders among peculiar characters, faces uh, weird events, and tries to communicate his philosophy. Through his experience, uh, we open ourselves to a world of unparalleled uh, symbolic expression to extract out philosophical truths that we probably never even thought of. This is a world that only Nietzsche can create. When Zarathustra arrived at the nearest uh, town at the edge uh, of the forest, he found many people assembled in the marketplace, for it had been announced that a tightrope walker would uh, give a performance. And Zarathustra spoke thus uh, to the people, I teach you the Übermensch, man is something that shall be overcome, what have you done to overcome him? All beings so far have created something beyond themselves, and you want uh, to be the ebb of that great uh, tide, and would rather go back to the beast than overcome uh, man. What is the ape to man? A laughing stock or a painful embarrassment? And just the same shall man be to the Übermensch, a laughing stock or a painful embarrassment. This is the first time Nietzsche touches upon one of his most popular themes, that of the Übermensch. Übermensch uh, translates roughly to above human or superman in uh, English. 
It is a word uh, Nietzsche uses to illustrate his idea of how man can transcend his current state. The Übermensch is an ideal. It is an archetype that uh, we can look up to in order to navigate ourselves better in the moral and social landscape. The best portrayal of the Übermensch in Thus Spoke Zarathustra can be found in the following monologue. Man is a rope stretched uh, between the animal and the Übermensch, a rope uh, over an abyss, a dangerous crossing, a dangerous on the way, a dangerous looking back, a dangerous trembling and standing still. What is great in man is that he is a bridge and not a purpose. That which is lovable in man is that he is a transition and a downfall. I love those who don't know how to live except when they perish, for they are those who cross over to the other side. I love the great despisers, for they are the great worshippers and arrows of yearning for the other side. I love those who don't first look behind the stars for a reason to perish and to be a victim, but those who sacrifice themselves to the earth, so that the earth may one day belong to the Übermensch. I love him who lives to gain knowledge and wishes to gain knowledge so that the Übermensch can live one day, and so he wishes his downfall. The monologue goes on in the same rhetorical pattern. There is so much to unpack here, and that's the beauty of reading Nietzsche. Almost every sentence and every paragraph hides so much meaning. Nietzsche sees the current state of man as a transition. He understands the flawed nature of modern humans and considers the Übermensch as something that we need to aspire towards. He doesn't really describe uh, the Übermensch uh, precisely, but he provides hints. He talks about uh, sacrifice, transition, process, knowledge, virtue, humility and uh, downfall. He understands that if we don't sacrifice ourselves to the extent that we pursue our downfall and perishing, there will never be an Übermensch. He obviously talks in metaphorical terms, but he wants to make noise in order to be heard. We need to sacrifice all the things that are holding us back and limit our potential, things that we preserve because of fear and ignorance. We do so because we dwell in a place of hypnosis and homeostasis. Only someone who makes noise can wake us up uh, from this state. In the prologue of the book, Zarathustra encounters a saint in the forest. They have a very intimate uh, discussion and uh, at some point after Zarathustra reveals that he wants to help uh, mankind uh, with his teachings, they have the following uh, exchange. Do not go to men, but stay in the forest. Go rather even to the animals. Why not be like me, a bear among bears, a bird among birds? And what is the saint uh, doing in the forest? Uh, asked uh, Zarathustra. I make songs and I sing them, and in making hymns I laugh and weep and hum. Thus I praise God. When Zarathustra was alone, he spoke thus uh, to his heart. Could it then be possible? This old saint in his forest has not yet heard of it, that God is dead. The famous phrase, uh, God is dead, appeared uh, for the first time in gay science. However, one shouldn't uh, translate uh, his thesis as anti-theological. He understands the value and purpose of religion, but at the same time, he wants us to rethink our attitude uh, towards morality, which, until that point, is strongly interweaved uh, with religion. Towards the end of the 19th century and throughout the 20th century, we see how the distancing of people from religion has also led uh, to a disintegration of morality. Nietzsche predicted uh, that and wanted to warn people and uh, help them view morality as a personal responsibility. But he understands that the idea of God uh, is a human production that managed uh, to synthesize uh, societies for centuries. If we possess the thinking capacity to create such a story that can keep society together for so long, surely we have the resources to come up with an alternative framework for morality. Nietzsche is also quite vocal against the idea of guilt and sin. We are trapped in this metaphysical idea of guilt and sin, originating from religious doctrines and this is holding us back. It is holding us back from embracing reason, from thinking uh, critically and from taking more risks in life in order to actualize the idea of the Übermensch. By killing God, uh, we don't become immoral, but we emancipate ourselves from metaphysical ideas about sin and guilt. 
Finally, as it is stated in the introduction of the book, Nietzsche also denounces the otherworldly outlook of Christianity, its emphasis on a better life beyond this one. Zarathustra's philosophy, summarized in a single phrase, is a celebration of what is this worldly. It is a yes saying to life, this life, for Zarathustra, like Nietzsche, thinks that there is no other. You call it uh, will to truth, you wisest men, that which uh, impels you and fills you with lust, a will to the thinkability of all being, thus I call your will. You would make all being thinkable, for you doubt uh, with a healthy mistrust uh, whether it is already thinkable. But it shall yield and bend to you, so wills your will, it shall become smooth and serve the spirit as its mirror and reflection. That is your entire will, you wisest men, as a will to power. And that is even when you speak of good and evil and of valuations. Nietzsche was a big fan of uh, Schopenhauer, but he also opposed uh, some of his views. Schopenhauer has uh, famously spoken of a will to live. The will, as uh, Schopenhauer understands it, uh, is the expression of the desire of all nature to pursue and propagate life. Without will, there can be no life, but also this will for self-preservation creates a competitive and dynamic landscape uh, through which most of mankind's uh, misery and suffering is manifested. Nietzsche's opposing argument uh, to the will to live was the will to power. The will to power is often uh, misunderstood as people tend to, uh, to associate it uh, with dominance, aggression and the desire to enforce uh, one's will upon others. Nietzsche really viewed power as energy. He was obsessed with the idea of movement, self-expression, dynamism. He viewed the world as an eternally evolving and moving mechanism and thus movement and power were essential elements of this mechanism. The will to personal power is about the desire to become oneself. It is the driving force behind any attempt for self-actualization. The will to power is closely related to the idea of the Übermensch, but also to the idea of the eternal recurrence, as this will be discussed shortly. Without a driving force to push us towards our goals, and in Nietzschean terms, the ultimate goal is the Übermensch, we will never reach those goals. At the same time, our goals are never static, they are dynamic, they change and oftentimes they repeat themselves. They occur eternally and are just part of the absurdity of existence. The will to power can help us power through this absurdity. Sing and bubble over, O Zarathustra, heal your soul with new songs, that you may bear your great destiny, which has not yet been anyone's destiny. For your animals know it well, O Zarathustra, who you are and must become. Behold, you are the teacher of the eternal return, that is now your destiny. That you must be the first uh, to teach this teaching, how could this great destiny not be your greatest danger and sickness? Behold, we know what you teach, that all things eternally return, and we ourselves with them, and that we have already existed an infinite number of times, and all things with us. The idea of eternal recurrence is quite prevalent in Nietzsche's latest works. He experiments uh, with the possibility of time as circular and that most instances in our lives occur in a recurring fashion. Certain experiences uh, do indeed uh, constitute recurring uh, themes in our lives. Human relationships have uh, similarities and we can identify specific uh, patterns of behavior across most human interactions. I'm not sure if Nietzsche was referring to that or if he had something else in mind. In one of his uh, unpublished uh, notes, he writes, The question which you will have to answer before every deed that you do. Is this such a deed I am prepared uh, to perform an incalculable number of times? Heidegger believes that Nietzsche presents uh, the concept uh, of eternal uh, recurrence as a hypothetical. As it is stated in Wikipedia, the significant point is the burden uh, imposed uh, by the question of eternal recurrence, regardless of whether or not such a thing uh, could possibly be true. Again, uh, probably Nietzsche alludes uh, to the idea of self-responsibility and that we need to be careful when we pick our fights. 
There is also a connection between eternal recurrence and uh, free will. If there is a mechanism that generates an eternal recurrence of things, we are quite certainly not in charge of this mechanism. Free will isn't free in that case and a lot of our actions are predetermined. There is however some freedom in that space. The primal freedom that uh, he thinks we have is in what way we deal with internal drives and the obstacles that come our way. He knows that some things are not within our control, but the ones that are need to be pursued uh, through the will to power, the will to personal power and self-ownership. Regardless of how strenuous and difficult and full of failures this life might be, we need to power through it and at some point decide uh, to love our fate, Amor Fati. As he writes, you hire men, it longs for you, this joy, the irrepressible, blissful for your woe, you failures. All eternal joy longs for failures, for all joy wants itself, therefore it also wants agony. O oh happiness, O oh pain, O oh break, heart, you hire men, learn it well, that all joy wants eternity. Joy wants the eternity of all things. It wants deep, deep eternity. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, make sure to like, subscribe, turn on notifications and comment below something cool please so that more people can discover it. Uh, if you want to watch more videos from my channel, check out this one and this one. Take care. See you soon. Adrian out.